Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk. Let's Talk is a podcast where we give you a glimpse into some of our everyday conversations, which includes health, Bible, and even current events. I'm your host, Dwayne Powell. And your co-host, Hope Powell. I'm Jared. And I'm Richard. All right, let's talk. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about forgiveness and the need for reconciliation. Yes. And this is from scripture. When we look at Matthew chapter 6, we see that Jesus taught us how to pray. And in verse number 12, he says that we should pray and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. All right. So what is forgiveness in your own words? Um, I would say it's a restoring of relationships between two parties so that you can have peace and harmony. Mm. And of course, you can find this actually in Luke chapter 17, verses three and four, where it says, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. So forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean you neglect to correct the person, because in so doing, you allow them the opportunity to see their wrong and also to make reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's jump right into it. Any personal testimonies on forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I can start on that because I actually have... Um, three younger siblings. Um, I have mm-hmm. two sisters, one younger brother as well. And and growing up, it, it was mostly myself and my sisters growing up. We were the first to be born. And there have been differences and situations have arisen between us where there was, um, you know, unforgiveness arose mm-hmm. from whatever the situation was. I remember a few times, actually, that uh, one of my sisters, um, you know, stole my credit card and ran it up. Oh boy. You know, many probably of you right now be like, I have one of those siblings. <laughs> they <laughs> right. do this. You're right. doing it right now, you right. know, and, and, and she ran it up, you know, maybe thousand dollars or maybe more than that. And mm. I was so upset. Mm. Right. Because at that point you don't have a thousand dollars to spare. Right. Right. You know what I mean? As a you know, as a young man. And I was so, you know, so uh, it hurt. Hurt. Yeah. You know, angry. Yeah. Um, and I held on to unforgiveness in my heart for so long because it was not it was more than one occasion. Mm. It was not even one time. You know what I mean? So it kept on, the wound kept on getting larger and larger every time it happened. Wow. And I held that on for so long because, again, I didn't know how to forgive. Mm-hmm. You know, and even deep down, I didn't want to forgive because it's like, I need you to pay back this money. Right. Yeah. Right. I will not forgive you unless I get back every cent. And I held that on, you know. And again, I, re- I looking back now, I'm like, oh, that was wrong. You know what I mean? Because, again, she didn't have to give it back. She didn't have the money to give it back, first right. of all. Right. And, and second of all, holding on to that just made me, just made our relationship go, um, you know, What's that tear word? Apart. Schism, tear, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a schism there's that a kept schism. on growing, growing, right. you know, apart. But we've we've reconciled now. Amen. But that was a very you know tough time for me because that that was so hurtful. Right. You know what I mean? But I thank God for reconciliation, yeah. especially because they were my sisters. Right. right. You know. Right. And if you hadn't seen our previous episode on trust yes. and broken trust, mm-hmm. then today is um, going to be a blessing as well. So as Richard just stated about a sibling, just go back and watch the previous episode if you mm-hmm. have not seen it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I will share a testimony. My, um, about unforgiveness came from my older brother who abused me when I was young. And that caused a big rift, not just between him and I, but also the family. Mm-hmm. And I carried that for many, many, many years. But when I came to Christ, I saw that I had to forgive him and I also needed to forgive him mm. for me. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Well. For me, I've had, you know, multiple occasions of hurting other people and being hurt as well. And one that I'm thinking of right now is, you know, when I was in high school and uh, I had, you know, some some good friends, of course. And you, you make jokes with your friends or whatnot, but some can be more hurtful than others. And I just remember a few of my friends um especially at the most inconvenient times would just go all in and sometimes even pour in jokes that are legit racist, Mm. you know, no no sugar coating. It's just racist. Mm. Um, And, you know, that always stayed within me. Mm. I remember holding on to unforgiveness, you know, for some of them and just two years, not two years, but two of my friends actually recently, they reached out and they apologized for that. It wasn't something that I necessarily, um, told them per se, but I guess God brought it to them and they reached out and we were able, you know, to reconcile. And I still consider them my friends, good friends even. Mm. So I was praising God for that situation. Yes. So yeah. why do you think it's so hard for people to forgive? Mm. Very good question. Very good. <laughs> it's hard for people to forgive, you know, when I bring it home to myself because when somebody does something to you, you do not have control of that person's actions or that situation. Right. Mm-hmm. So now by holding on to unforgiveness, you kind of put yourself in this position where you think you can control them now in your mind, even, Oh, well, if I was in this situation, I would do this. Or what you do is you begin to act towards them a certain way, um, which is not 
right. Right. You begin to, you know, retaliate to them. And sometimes they do not even know why you're acting that way because mm-hmm. you haven't told them. Mm-hmm. Right. So in other words, you um are waiting for an opportunity to interact with them so you can get back at them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And another reason why it's hard to forgive is because of fear. A lot of times when things happen to you, um, you are concerned or worried that Mm -hmm. it's going to happen again. And fear is a, um, a a weight. It's a Mm -hmm. burden as well. And, and, and coupled with unforgiveness, whoa, you know, you have to be careful because if you allow fear to keep you from moving forward, or from forgiving somebody, mm. it, it can hurt your yeah. life. Yeah. And like what Jared was saying, that is extra work on yourself. Yeah. When you're, you you know, acting a certain way because of a person that you are holding unforgiveness towards, mm-hmm. um, every time they come around, you your mood change. <laughs> yeah. You know, or you say, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to speak to this person. And you sometimes go out of your way out, to yeah. speak to the others that may be in the room, or if, you know, if, if that's the case, and try to ignore that person. Um, that's just extra work, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? Right. That's right. And you, again, you go, you become a prisoner in your own mind. Yes. You know, there's a saying that says, hey, you can't prevent or stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can mm-hmm. prevent them from laying a nest in your head. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. so you can't, you, you can prevent people right. from, you know, taking control of your mind. They're enjoying their life, right. living their life. And you're sitting there just holding on to this, you know what I mean? Extra work. Mm-hmm. Um, but just to move on, another thing why it's so hard for many people to, forgive is they hold on to pride yeah mm-hmm. and of course that's just the na- that's the carnal nature right. that's exactly. innately in us you know which we have to get victory over right. and let's look at it from a relationship standpoint you know i'm married and many times there's been situations um where there's been differences between myself and my wife you know what i mean and sometimes you feel in yourself that hey you're right mm-hmm. and so you're not going to yield Mm. Right, because I'm right, and so there's a schism now. You, one person's <laughs> quiet, the other person, no one's talking. Right, because yeah. both are right, right, but both cannot be right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And so these things arise in relationships, and you have to be able to yield, surrender. You know, yes. especially when you know you did or you said something wrong. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? But that conscience is just like you're just sitting there, you're just mad. Like the Holy Spirit's <laughs> like, you know, you're wrong, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you're go mm-hmm. talk, go, go talk, talk. Go yeah. communicate, open yeah. back that communication not line. Not gonna do it. You know, you know and, what I and, mean? and that's why communication is very important because sometimes you may not know you've said or done something yeah. wrong. Yeah, sometimes you know, and then the person don't say nothing, and you yeah. don't say nothing, yeah. and then you just know the 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 the, the mood change. The mood change. Right, right. The air is a little thick. You know, right. and that's why you should communicate and um, you know talk and lay aside that pride. Like mm-hmm. early writings in one nineteen, mm-hmm. pride and selfishness. Will lay aside for five minutes. Yeah, that's it. It'll solve yeah. most problems. It will yeah. solve most problems. That's all it. problems. All yes. problems. Yeah. One, one more point to the marriage relationship. You said that a lot of times neither is right, and there are some times in marriage that you have your own perspective and you want your spouse to see it how you see it Mm -hmm. and so it's not necessarily either party is wrong Mm -hmm. it's about working through it's your perspective and then you hold on to that you, you're not seeing what I'm saying. You no, don't hear me. Hear me yeah. And that turns into unforgiveness instead of, as Dwayne says, sit and talk that out. Sit you have talk it out. Communication will solve a lot of people carrying unforgiveness yeah. as well. And, and once you sit, talk it out, forgive each other, move on. Move Do on. not linger in that, that, that situation. Don't Do not it revisit it a month later, That's a week right. later, a year later, whatever. Forget about it and yeah. move on. That's Open right. that wound and put some salt on it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Don't, don't do it. Exactly. <laughs> mm. So what happens when we hold on to unforgiveness? You know, in in this case, what if we were to hold on to this unforgiveness mm. after we, you know, say or claim we have forgiven? Well, I will say from experience, holding on to what happened to me caused a lot of negative um, time in my life. Mm. Drugs, alcohol, um, hatred, mm. um, even toward myself. Un- unforgiveness will make you literally sick. Mm. Like, it yeah, it will tear your body apart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And having headaches, having stomach mm-hmm. issues, so many things came out of me holding on to that forgiveness. But praise God through his mercy and his grace toward me through his word and how he loved me and forgave me for what I've done. Mm-hmm. I learned to forgive my brother as well. Yes. And unforgiveness is dangerous because it can lead you to murder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, literally. Either, literally. Um, when you look in the Bible, right, there's a great account as we're talking about, you know, forgiveness and the effects, the negative effects of holding on to unforgiveness. When you look at Absalom, David's son, and then he had another son named Amnon, and they had a sister named Tamar. So Tamar was raped by Amnon, and Absalom, he was angry about it. So the Bible says that he did not speak 
to Amnon, neither good or bad, for two years. Mm. He didn't speak to him. Mm. And when he got the opportunity to, you know, get back, um, do revenge to him, he killed him. Mm. And many people, when we hold on to unforgiveness, we hate the person in our mind, which yeah. the Bible says is murder. It's murder, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and if we get the opportunity, what would we do to them? Oh we God. Many times when people want to get back at somebody else, they don't want to just do equal with no. what you did to me. Right. They want to, oh, you know, one up, up it. One up. One up it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know somebody actually who has held on to unforgiveness for over 20 years. Mm. And it's wow. not toward an acquaintance, you know what I mean, a friend, but it's actually a family member. I, I'm trying to envision in my mind holding on mm. to hatred mm. against somebody. When they call, I don't want to hear about it, you know what I mean? You try to finish, end the conversation as quickly as you can right. because you are holding on to something toward your family member, your right. spouse, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, that means there, there's, a, there's a portion in someone's life where the spirit, the, the prodding and the wooing of the spirit becomes mm. so watered down right. or you, you or even present. obsolete obsolete yes. mm-hmm. because after a while you know what if i've had if i find myself in a situation where i've i've done something wrong the holy spirit is gonna make me feel guilty about mm-hmm. it you know what i mean i'm not gonna feel right i mean you know what i mean okay we need to resolve this right. we need to reconcile but to hold on for unforgiveness for 20 years wow that's a long time and yeah. someone viewing right now maybe experiencing that's this right. you know what i mean we need to yield to jesus yes. Yes. right and exactly. i know of a couple um, husband and wife they're still married 40 something years, maybe 40, 42 years. And the wife is still holding on to some things the husband has done and vice versa. But that wife is holding on to it so much that she's literally sick. Mm-hmm. Her wow. body is breaking down. Mm. She's depressed. She's always sad. She's not, she's not living, mm. but they're still together. Mm. Right. And wow. at every moment she has, she brings it up to to the husband. Mm. Right. Mm. And, and this constant bickering. Wow. And I always think what happens one day if he or she dies? Mm-hmm. How is the other one going to feel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They never reconciled. Wow. And I pray that they do, because if one of them does die, that other person is going to have this level of guilt and mm. shame. And right. now their life mm. it can and will be affected negatively because they're holding on to unforgiveness and they never talked it out. Mm. Mm. So, you know, husbands and wives are out there who are holding on to hurt and pain. Come and talk it out mm-hmm. one with another because you don't know what can ever happen. Mm. And, and that's true. And another point of that is that even the person holding on to unforgiveness, mm-hmm. if they die holding on to that, mm. The you Bible know, says those individuals cannot enter the kingdom That's of God. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cannot. Yeah. And when you look at people in the world, many times, you know, as the Bible says in Luke 16, the children of this world are wiser than the, the children, children of light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you look at, you know, movie stars and whatnot, just for example, look at Will Smith and um, Janet, the first uh, Aunt Viv mm-hmm. on the Fresh Prince of right. Bel-Air. Mm-hmm. They had a rift. They had not spoken at all in approximately 27 years long time that long but recently they were able to reconcile and many of us in the church have been holding on to unforgiveness for right. longer mm-hmm. right and we still cannot reconcile mm-hmm. right. what's amazing they saw their need he saw his need she saw her need whether it was for personal or the other person they realized that they needed to fix this yeah. exactly. in, in order to move on because when you carry something that someone has done or you may have done to yourself, whatever it is, you can't really live mm-hmm. free. You're stuck, right. You're stuck in that, that time period, mm-hmm. that era. That's and all you think about. And it shouldn't, and it think, think about it, it shouldn't take people of the world, as it were, mm-hmm. to set the example for us right. as Christians exactly. to forgive. We should be the ones setting the example, you know, being the head, as it were, and right. not the tail. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of times we hold on to forgiveness because we ourselves don't forgive, you know, ourselves for something that right. we've done in the past. That's important. So, yeah. we, we hold our self in bondage and therefore we want to hold others in bondage as well Mm -hmm. when we learn to forgive ourselves you know that's freeing our minds and that weight that you know we have i've done something wrong in the past but i i went to jesus and Mm -hmm. he said that you know come to me and i will forgive you Mm -hmm. you know and if we hold on you know continue to hold on to things that we've done how can we forgive others Mm. we can't possible can't do it so when is there when there is unforgiveness between two parties, who should reconcile first? And I would say whoever wants to be free from that burden. Mm. That's how I look at it. Yeah. So if, if I've done something or something was done to me, let's handle it. If, if you have to take a five-minute break, a 10-minute break, mm. or even a day or two, go to God, pray, and then go and reconcile mm. because I want to be free from that. Mm. I mean, right. I, yeah, I think that's important to do. I think also the person who 
yields to their pride, right? right? Mm Because again, you know, once you recognize, hey, you know what I mean? I want to reconcile. Mm-hmm. You're going to make a step. You're not going to sit there and wait for the person. I wonder if they're ready. To right. Right. No, no, you're going to make the <laughs> first make step. step. You know what I mean? I have a situation yeah. in which um, I had, I need to reconcile with one of my, my, my cousins, we, we closest cousins I had, closest cousin I have. There was a situation in which I was invited to an event and I wasn't able, able to make it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and she wasn't happy about that. Um, which caused us to not speak in over, I think, think three years now. Wow. We haven't spoken. But, you know, talking about this, seeing it from the biblical perspective and seeing who needs to make the first step, you know, I may not hear from her, so I'm going to actually m- reach out Amen. and try to reconcile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and then I'm, I'm almost sure we're going to figure, we're going to laugh this, right. laugh this off. And re- What was the point of all yeah. that, you know? Right. So I think that whoever yields and recognizes, hey, we need to reconcile, mm. make the first move. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes people will say time heals all wounds. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. not that's not necessarily the case because, you, you know, it may, but, you know, sometimes it's not. Right. You yeah. know, like you said, you may reach out and you're going to laugh about it. Mm-hmm. Um, some people will hold on to it and and they, they think it's squashed, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. not. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you'll sit and, you know, think like five years ago or ten years ago or, or even a year or whatever it is and just – bring up you know that situation and you get mad all over again Mm -hmm. and now you're in a mood taking it out on somebody else right yeah that's true and it's important richard you said that you're going to reach out because that person may never reach out Mm -hmm. and and as christians that's something we should want to do Mm -hmm. when the love of god is in our heart we shouldn't want there to be any negative um issues between us family and friends so I, I, I'm very happy to hear that. That yeah. inspires me to sit and meditate and talk to the Lord and see, are there any issues that I need to go to family and friends about to mm. reconcile? Right. And that's mm-hmm. what this podcast mm-hmm. is about. Yeah. Yeah. And once you've done your part, once you've reached out to them, if they decide to reject, all you can do is leave them at right. that point. Because, you know, we cannot force anyone to, mm-hmm. to forgive. Mm-hmm. So we shouldn't have to keep running after that person. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? No, yeah. we've reached out, given them the opportunity. Yeah. When the Holy Spirit convicts them, then they will come back. Leave the rest for God. Exactly. And we have a perfect example. Um, Jesus yep. yes. taught forgiveness. He exemplified forgiveness. So let's talk about that. How, how does Jesus um, teach forgiveness? He teaches it in the most beautiful way possible, which all of us, especially me, as I meditate on this, I need to get to this level. Because when Jesus was on the cross, as he was dying, he was looking into the eyes of his persecutors, his murderers, the people who drove the nails in his hand, Mm. the people who spit in his face. They Mm. beat him. They put um, a crown of thorns on his head. He's looking at them and he says, Father, forgive them, Mm. for they know not what they do. Mercy. Mm. (laughs) And then Mm. you look at Stephen, who also attained to this level of forgiveness. Stephen said, as they were throwing big stones at him, crushing his skull, Father, Mm. forgive them. Mm. I mean, if somebody's wow. doing that to you now, like, mm. yeah, can, have, have we reached that level? I said, no. Lord, please mm. help me to get there because we have to get there. Exactly. And if you yeah. think about it, Jared, now that you bring up the stones, we talk about um, how in the church and mm-hmm. in families, but more so in the church, people say things against us or they throw these black balls and they, they're talking and they're gossiping and we hold on to that so long. But Stephen had literal stones being thrown at him mm. and he was able to forgive. Mm. That's a level of Christ-likeness I know I need. A level of love. And, and love mm-hmm. and that I want and I need. I, I, I'm i not there yet. No, no, but that's the that's where we want to attain to. Yes, you know definitely. What I mean? And that's why we have to follow the principles of what yeah. the Bible teaches about forgiveness because mm-hmm. in Matthew chapter 18, in which Peter, you know, he came and asked Christ, again, the situation with Christ, how many times should I forgive my brethren? Mm. You know, what, what was Christ's response? 70, 70 times, times seven. seven. You know what I mean? Which shows you, you're not supposed to tally it. No. Right. Who, who, who's going to mark down that many times? Mm. And right. if, <laughs> pull out your checklist. How, how many, many times, times have we? This time, many times, this many times. Oh, you got one more strike. <laughs> yes. No. I mean, Could think you about imagine it. if Christ did that to us? Exactly. No, but that's a hard saying, though, because the carnal heart naturally mm. does not want to forgive. No. Mm. No. And I would, ha- I would say that, and Dwayne was there for this, when I went to tell my brother that I forgave him, mm. it was for me because his response was not genuine. It was all, at all. Mm. He was like, well, yeah, I mean, I was young, but whatever the excuse right. was. Right. And I was like, Lord, like, you know, in that moment, like I was, I was, like you said, angry all over again. Mm. It's mm. like, that's not what I came for. But what you also have to learn is that when you are forgiving, 
someone, you may not always get the hear to hear. I am sorry. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not always about that. It's about making things right between you and God. Mm-hmm. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. That's mm-hmm. it. You're, so you're clearing your conscience. Yeah. Yes. You know. So I I, 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 li- I like that. I like yeah, that. Have to move on. So mm-hmm. as you enter into this new year, calendar year, as it is, many people are making resolutions, right? Mm-hmm. But the root word of resolution is to resolve. Resolve. Mm-hmm. So for all of you out there, and we here at the table, let's choose to resolve any matters, any Mm -hmm. issues in our families with people, our acquaintances, if someone at work, and most certainly Mm -hmm. people in the church, right? Because how are we worshiping in spirit and in truth Mm. if we're holding on to unforgiveness? Mm -hmm. And let us remember Hebrews 12. In Hebrews 12, it says, let us choose, it's a choice, to Mm -hmm. lay aside the weight of unforgiveness, which so easily beset us. Now, who should we look to? Jesus. Jesus. You have to look to Jesus, Mm -hmm. who he endured the cross, the shame, and sat down on the right hand of the Father. Mm. And that is also where we are able to sit if we glean and and take hold of his teachings. Mm. I I love that because, again, the scripture says, let us us lay aside every weight. And Mm -hmm. one of those weights is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Someone may be holding on to something else, you know what I mean? Malice or or, or grudge or something else. Every weight, every sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Let's lay it it aside. And Mm -hmm. if there's no other reason to forgive someone, if you can't find any reason, if you don't think anything we're saying makes sense to you, just remember that Jesus Christ will and has forgiven you. That's why we should forgive. Amen. Amen. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another episode of Let's Talk. If you're watching or on YouTube, please share this video. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Music, share it as well. We love to hear the comments. Um, continue to um, practice the, the ministry of reconciliation, forgiveness. Amen. And we will talk to you next time on Let's Talk. Thank you.